I um, my last week biblical question: Should a man romance a woman? Very interesting discussion at church yesterday. And so, should a man romance a woman? I say no. One of the problems that we're having with women today is that they have been treated as though they are special. And as a result of that, you have built their egos, and their egos are out of control. And once you stop doing that, they go nuts, really. They don't just say, oh, that was nice. That built my ego, but I understand now he doesn't do it anymore, so I just don't need it. No, they go nuts to try to force you to continue romancing them. The, and which is romancing their egos. They have been treated as though they're special rather than treated with God's love, the way all people should be treated. And God's love destroys the ego. It doesn't build it. And so you have men uh, licking and lapping and, some, and just doing whatever they can for the woman, never making her happy. Because you can't make the ego happy. It wants more and more and more until you give your life. And it just finds somebody else. Another weak male. But no, women should not be romanced. They should be treated in the same way you treat all people. With truth. And when you date, just date. Don't get into spending your money and having sex and all that crap. You are setting them up to destroy you. It's amazing. Her ego must be destroyed with perfect love. I want to give you an example of what, what happens when a man or men romance women. Here's what will happen. Women's March is underway across the country and around the world. More than 250 rallies are planned in the United States. And this is what it looked like in Washington, D.C. today. You could see just crowds of people. Here, millions across the DMV turned out for the Women's March. Love Trump's kids, love Trump's kids, love Trump's kids. It was an attack on innocent children. And defenseless citizens. Looking for survivors among the close to 200 people believed to be <laughs> still in that rubble. <laughs> You are amazing. <laughs> uh, there was no fire at the Women's March. There was no, none of the other stuff, but they go nuts when you romance them. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> That's what happens, men. You're supposed to help the women overcome the hell in them. Don't love the hell in them. All right? Very nice, Nick. That's what happens when men romance women. There's this order to life, and that order is God in Christ, Christ in man, man over woman, and woman over children. Nothing else is going to work but that. Nothing else. Women are not supposed to be treated like gods. They are not God. All right? So watch out, men. No romancing. These men are paying up the yang yang just to get a piece. What? To get sex. <laughs> to satisfy mama. Ain't that something? And you can never please mama. No way. Amazing. You know, I mentioned this at church yesterday, too. I saw this uh, documentary. I saw the documentary about a guy by the name of uh, Aaron Hernandez. He did. Now, he did. Uh, it was called The Mind of a uh, Aaron Hernandez, right? 
And it was about this football player who um, just went out of control, went out of control. It was about this criminal investigation into New England Patriots player uh, Aaron Hernandez and his eventual suicide. So what they did, supposedly they did a thorough interview about Hernandez. And Hernandez was convicted for the murder of Odin Lloyd, who was uh, an associate and was dating Aaron's fiancé's sister. It was very, it was three hours long. I watched the whole three hours. It was captivating. It was very, very interesting. Um, and here are just a few interesting things about it. This boy, according to the, the story, uh, Aaron grew up uh, with, um, apparently, I guess his father and mother was together for a while, and then they divorced. They broke up, they divorced, and so Aaron was just with his mother, and it sounded like, I believe the father came back, and but yeah, the whole mess was still going on, and Aaron... Um, hated his mother, hated his mother. So he became a very angry kid. And it seemed as though I can tell he was close to his father or not, but his father had a lot to do with him, uh, with his uh, playing football, right? And so the father died, I believe. I believe he died when Aaron was very young. And so he was just left with his mother. And he hated his mother, Really? according to the story. And so um, they had a friend of his on this, in this report who was supposedly close to Aaron. They grew up together. I don't know why they brought this guy in to talk about that man's private life, but they, this friend say, said that he and Aaron had a so-called relationship at one time going on, I guess a sexual thing when they were friends. But Aaron went through a lot. He had a lot of anger. And he went to Florida, I believe, played with a team there in college or something. And then he went on with the Patriot, and one thing led to another one. And it, the, instead of, oh, one thing that they said in the report I saw was that at some point in life, Aaron said that he was molested by a woman when he was young, and that brought a lot of the stuff that he was going through, he was feeling. And near the end of the report, the reporter said, well, we could not confirm that he was molested by a woman, but we did confirm that he was molested by a man. I'm like, what the? So once again, they're putting men down, right? They couldn't confirm the woman, but they could confirm the man. And long story short, no one, from what I can tell, went to that boy and said to him, you need to forgive your mother so you can get better. And because they were questioning, why can't he just get better? He make a lot of money on all the opportunity. Why doesn't he get better? Money and opportunity does not make you get better. It does not solve your spiritual issues. The only thing that's going to solve that is um, forgiveness. Stop hating. Stop playing God, right? So here are some of the things that they said was they blamed for Aaron's problems, <laughs> for his horrible, horrible life he was living in spite of making a lot of money. They blame, they say, the stress of playing football at that level. They, uh, his alleged homosexual relationship and his anger about it. They blame it, uh, CTE, a brain disease from repeated hair injuries. Here's a news report on that. When it comes to the damage to Aaron Hernandez's brain, doctors say they've never seen anything like it. The director of Boston University's CTE Center, Dr. Anne McKee, 
has confirmed the former NFL star had the worst case of chronic traumatic encephalopathy ever seen in someone his age. A definitive link can't be proved in explaining Hernandez's behavior, but CTE is known to cause aggressive impulses, emotional volatility, and rage. Regardless, the extensive damage to a brain in someone as young as Hernandez suggests that the problem of CTE in the NFL just got worse. See, you can't, this is why I've been warning you not to trust the so-called experts. They have no idea what they're doing or what they're saying, really. So-called CTE, it can't be proven. And by the way, Aaron was in games, according to the report, even when he was young, according to the report. Is that CTE too or is that yeah, mama? They don't tell the truth because they know not what they talk, they're talk. talking about. Just because they have a degree, a piece of paper that they sat in some dumb classroom and received, that doesn't mean they know anything. They are dumber than a doorknob. I want you to hear um, some of the phone conversation that Aaron had with his mother from jail. Uh, his, uh, Aaron couldn't trust his mother. Listen to this. You feel you can't talk to me. How so could I? How could I? We could try. No, I mean, you know how many times I try? I always test you. I've been testing you for about 12, 15 years. I'll just tell you one thing and tell you not tell, and it always gets back to me. Well, how do you no. think me and Ta why do you think me and Tanya are so close? <laughs> That's just one of the reasons. I could tell her. But a mother's you know, not like. Yes, the mother, mother is. You're supposed everything. to be able to talk to somebody. I mean, yeah. let your feelings out. Talk about uh, personal things. It means it's everything. You know I mean, like, there's so many things I like. I would love to talk to you so you could know me as a person, but I never could tell you. And you're going to die without even knowing your son. That's the craziest thing about it. Amazing, huh? Ain't no CTE or no football trauma to the head. Uh, this boy was in games as a kid, and he was involved with a drug dealer as a game banger while he was playing for the uh, Patriot. So when they tell you, oh, it's a disease, no, it's a spiritual trauma. It's anger. You just heard that conversation with his mother from prison. Here's where they fought about money. We were on a f***ing little leash, little leash. Oh, give me a crumb here and there. Oh, Aaron, you're so great. Blah, blah, blah. Give you a little crumb here and there. Yeah, what do you want me to do? I told you when you got that f 40 million. Give me a million. I'm set for life. I'm not That's giving up. That's DJ right now. Me give life. you a million dollars. You act like <laughs> I had $40 million. Nobody could touch the fuck you. out of here, Mom. <laughs> Mothers drive their kids insane. And then they sit back and play innocent. They play victim and blame it on the father. And one last soundbite about uh, Eric speaking with his mother from prison. They speak about his mother cheating and it run, ruining his life. You made decisions that there's, you don't, like, that are the worst. I don't put you down, and you f my whole life up. Oh, you don't put me down, but I f your whole life up. I ain't living with that. You I, did. It is, but I forgave no. you, and it's over with. Yes, you did. I was the happiest f***ing little kid in the world, and you f me up. And I just lost my father, and I had to go to college, and I had nobody. What the f*** do you think I was going to do? Become a perfect angel? It's, oh, my God. If I was with you right now, I would have probably punched the shot of you. Like, I don't even know why you, you bring me to this level. Wow. Isn't that amazing, folks? It's the mothers who are doing these, these things to the children. It's not the father. But here, may, you think she's a victim when she's a child. Now, they didn't, re they didn't say, you know what, that's the problem. He hated his mother from day one. 
Someone should have told him to forgive her so he could have gone off and had a real life. Very honest about it. You're right, girl. But they didn't focus on that. They call it, the experts call it CTE, whatever that is. CTE, they blame it on the football, playing, uh, the stress of playing football. They blame it on a homosexual relationship and it's anger about it. Everything but what it is. You just heard the relationship with he and his mother. And I believe if someone had told that boy, forgive your mother, you're right. She screwed your life up. But forgive her and you will have an amazing life. You will overcome it. Now that you're playing football, you're away from her, go live your life. And you see how she would not apologize because she loved the fact that he was unhappy. That feel like control. All she had to do is say, you know what? You were right, son. I was wrong. I should not have done that. I apologize. But no. That's why God said, go and forgive, and he will forgive you. Don't ask for forgiveness. The women ain't going to give it. But the story was absolutely amazing, and it was amazing how the reporter was presenting it. They, didn't want to, they couldn't find the woman that was accused of molesting him, but they could find the man. Confirm. Uh, confirm. You know something? They didn't blame the mother for this man's downfall. They blame everything but that. Forgive your mothers, men and women, boys and girls. And God will forgive you. And you will have an amazing life. You really will. Because he will take her identity away from you. That spirit that made a home in you, that's the same spirit that made a home in her. You become like what you hate. Ethan is a first-time caller out of uh, Akron. Amazing. And don't forget to like, follow, tweet, subscribe, and share the Jesse Lee Peterson Radio Show, folks. We really appreciate it. We are at war. It is a spiritual battle for the soul of America. And it's going to take all of us to do it.